aningi banku to mal mu beto na doku sone yata atari yata akoita andung allan na yata gambi e banku kan super sonics leading kiral siata katam binin to mal mu meti super sonics be banku tan sabani nani leto fata findu banku do dum ila google play store to wala ila apple app sign sign ye super sonics la money transfer app o download pour ke ifa muna fang na safi sol Semester Avenue, Semester Avenue Show, live on GTTV. Sargal suñ modou modou ak fatou fatou yi. Are you coming to the Gambia this holiday season? Mo xam nga joge fuf ci Senegal, Germany, USA, India, China, wala sax United Kingdom. Préparez len ndax dinañ len celebrate fi ci GTTV. Suñ modou modou yi ak fatou fatou yi ñefé nañ ak dole ci bitim rew. Kon dok deserve nañ pour ñu sargal len sa yuñ delu ci sen bir rew. Te lolo nak lañuy def fi ci Semester Avenue. Sargal Gambian diaspora ñu wax ñu seen jaar jaar. Tukki ciono la way ñefé fula la. Kon dok yéna bari fula.
Like everything that you eat here is organic? Yeah, it's yeah, good. it's organic. I think, you know, that's the beauty of it. In America, before you know it, in five years, if you go there, you have big cheeks, big stomach. <laughs> All of that is unhealthy. No, I think I'm going to control my body, even if I travel. Even if you want to, you can. Because there is a lot of processed food in there. So you're minusing your life while also overworking yourself. So that's why I, t I told you, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not concerned if I go back, if I'm going to have a job or not. Because after this corona, a whole lot of jobs would be obsolete. So. Now people are working from, ha from their homes. Yeah, their homes. That's true. So I'm here also training myself on other projects. It's cheaper and I can get more understanding and more co comfortable environment. When I go there, I would know what to do. And I don't want to be in America anymore, like, for that long. Okay. This is long. Right. I'm saying that on live TV. So, uh, which means um, you already have a plan, like, when you're coming to come back for? That's why I'm here. That's why I'm trying to finish up my project. Mm -hmm. So, after the project, you're going to This is gonna be settle home. for good? This is going to be home. It's Gambia. Yeah, this People is Gambia. You know? That's why I, this is the advice I have for my people. When you come to Gambia, chill with your people, man. Don't chill. Don't, don't, don't change for nothing. It's no worry. Chill with your people. With that, you're going to have that's, that's destitution here. Yeah. But there's life here. Yeah, there's life, that's obviously. The there's there's a life. Living in America. Life so it, it depends on what side you want to be on. If you want to just be living and not leave, or if you want to just have a life. But I understand I'm, I'm, I'm getting your point, yeah. No, no, I'm understanding. I'm understanding. <laughs> no, I'm understanding every single line. Yeah, seriously, I am. Because I have Manjago English. Yeah. So you need to catch up on the other. Okay. Right. Well, look at this, man. Look at this. Yeah, this is very beautiful. It's very look beautiful. The, sun. the birds, Why would everything. I rush to go back to America and be on the lockdown. Why? I have a son there. Okay. I have a wife. There. Family. I have a family there. Okay. Yeah. How many kids? One for now. Oh, okay, one. Yeah. So your wife is she American or she's too Gambian or she's Gam um, she's American. Okay, American. Yeah. Okay. So is she comfortable like you coming in the country, you know, for such a long time? What do you mean comfortable? Yeah, you know, this is corona. Right. So maybe she might be concerned that you know you might Well she's concerned. Yeah. I'm also concerned for them. Yeah. I, I feel like um, I don't want to talk too much about Corona. Okay. Why? But there is a concept that people don't understand, at least on my own understanding. Mm -hmm. I think with the Corona, we can, we can discuss that later after I eat. Okay. <laughs> you know? No problem. Because if you've been following me, I was one of the first person to come out to say I had Corona. When it was very... In Area. Inconvenient for people to come out and say they had corona. Corona. Because what was that? There was a lot of fear mongering circling around corona. Sure. That if you get it, you're gonna die. Die straight, yeah. Straight. Yeah. And I remember this one time when I called my family back home and said, "Well, I did a test, and and they said I had the corona." Corona. And wow. Everybody was like. I can have fallacy. Right. <laughs> but then it's incredible. Yeah. So how was that moment for you, like when you had a corona? Like were you it, self quarantined and at home or they did they take you to tough. any? Corona is is hard. It's real. It's um, real. It is real. And um it, I had it for two days when I felt my body was going through a lot of processes. Okay. 
Um, it was not easy, you know, body ache, you know, it was not shot, it was dry, the air was dry. Oh, okay. So I think that, because the air needs to be moisturized sure. when it gets to the lungs. Sure. But people say you, there's shortness of breath. Yeah, and I like, you know, you difficulty. that part to people. Because problem that, that's, that's totally true. Okay. So which means you did not encounter that, right? I had this dry breathing where my lungs feel like it needs more air. It gets air, but it was... It like was shortage. Dry. Okay. So your entire throat was dry. It, did, it was scary, of course. You know, but... The whole concept of it, I do not believe. I don't believe in it. You know? Okay. Corona. Yeah. Corona, it, it is real. Yeah, it's real. Well, Even though a lot of people will argue like it's not real, especially in the government, it's politics, so... No, it's not. But there can be politics surrounding the vaccine of it. Oh, okay. It's not. It is real. Like but what kind of politics? Because, you know, a lot of... There are so many, you know, conspiracy theories, you know, surrounding the vaccine alone. You know, that, you no know, it is meant to truth. depopulate Africans, you know. There's no absolute truth in anything anybody does or say. You know, you always have to take a grain of salt in everything. Something that satisfies your own understanding. Hmm. You live with it. But I'll tell you. Vaccine does cure something, but wow. also takes something from you. Welcome back once again. Like I said, it is Semester Avenue, you know, hang out with DJ Zanu. So, DJ, welcome to the show. This is Semester Thank Avenue. You. So, today much. we are hanging out with you. Right. <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I know right now uh, people are watching. So, what would you like the society to know about you before we get into the program? Well, first of all, I'm humbled to be here. Okay. Um, I can be a talent promotion TV. Mm -hmm. I see the work that you guys are doing. Thank you. Um, you know, this is this is a good concept. Mm -hmm. Also, knowing that it circles around young people. Mm -hmm. You know, they can not, they, they can be wrong. There can be nothing wrong going forward with that. Okay. Um, Besides that, um, it's, it's good to be here. Okay. I mean, I'm home. This is home for me. Always happy to be around my people okay. and inside my country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, like I said, welcome to the Gambia once again. I'm welcoming you to the Gambia. So, for how long have you been in the Gambia? <laughs> I mean, when did you la when did you land it? I mean, this is home for me. So yeah, I know, but like there must be, you know, that time, you know. Oh, right. That yeah, you, when was that? That you landed yeah. back home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Um, I came here December the 23rd, I believe. December 23rd. Well, I was supposed to be here December 23rd. I left Seattle around the 18th. But because of this whole coronavirus, there, there's some rules change. Um, I have to miss my flight almost four times. Okay. I slept in New York for almost four times because of at one point I got the coronavirus but before I got to New York it was already expired oh, okay. for the 72 hours because I got a delay at Las Vegas. Okay. So you need to renew that? Yeah, I need to renew it. I either pay $400 to get the rapid test. $400? Right. Right. Oh, and that's a rapid test. Yeah, rapid test. What of the normal one? <laughs> How many dollars have free. you to pay? <laughs> no, the normal one is free. Oh, okay, it's free. Yeah, the normal okay. one is free. But, okay. you know, I calculated that I'm like, you know, I can chill with that one, right? In New York, I have homeboys there. So I decided to just do the normal test and chill in New York for, for, for almost two days. Okay. So my result was out in the next 42 hours, 48 hours. Okay. I went back to the airport, but then 
someone post tested positive right when we boarded in. The same flight. Yeah, the same. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a hustle. I know. So we are all have to come back, come out again from the plane. Oh. And you know, it was just a hustle. I would I say know. that. But finally we bought it, and here I am. To the smiling coast of Africa. Right. I'm, I'm just glad that I, mm -hmm. I made it for the I Christmas. Know. I know. So um, when you landed at the airport, you know, at that instant, what was going on in your mind? Because I know this holiday or this trip might be different from your other trips. So what was going on in your mind? Um, well, I know it, I was excited. Okay. It was exciting. Um, it was a good feeling. So at that moment, I don't think you you think anything else besides just wanting to see your family, family. and your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I will tell you if you up the sky and look down. Our flight landed at night. Night, okay. Yeah, at night time. So <laughs> it was really, really different. But I know this is Gambia. I know. So I'm I'm used to it. I know. You know? So uh, how was the push and pull at the airport? Because you know recently we have been seeing we are between the airport authorities and uh, you know the semester that we are coming. You know they tested. Right. So right. hope you did not face similar scene. That that I would tell you it was stressful. I think our airport. You know I respect our men mm -hmm. and women in uniform. You know their sacrifices and all of that. But it looks really disorganized mm, like in, in in what sense nothing nothing that an airport that i've been to i can't compare it to none the the airport in gambia is terrible um if i'm being honest I, i'm not saying this out of disrespect mm -hmm. to anyone um i understand too is just we all struggle in every sector sure but that airport man uh, there, there needs to be a lot of there needs to be work that needs to be done at the airport. Okay. You know, immediately you land, you have almost about tons of personnel, personnel surrounding you, working from different departments. It, it's hard to know who is in charge. It's hard to know who is there to scam you. So it's like everyone is just engaging you. Right. Everyone is like here, 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 here. It's a bag. It's finger what I say. So. It, be, it becomes chaotic. So yeah, and, and, and I think, you know, the, uh, that part is very important because sometimes right. we do have a lot of stories that, you know, when these people come, you know, right. people are going to be engaging them, okay, like, Ibaju Alajani, you need to pay this, you know, right. pay 50 euro or 50 dollar or whatever. So, right. how was that encounter for you? Well, how many that, dollars did you pay at, <laughs> at the Gambia Airport? That in itself does not make sense. Okay. That in itself does not make sense that you, you have to pay for security something, I think that's what they said. And then you have to go and show some testing mm -hmm. and then the bag carrier and, you know, for me, I don't think I face that much, but I know people that- That face I'm it man, a lot. Man, I'm a mm -hmm. And I just don't like, let anyone just ride over me like that. Okay. So I think that gave me a little pass. But I know other people that have do to pay it. a lot of money okay. just to be out of that airport. So what of your luggage is like, do, do, at some point in time, did anyone ask you to maybe open your bag to go through it? No, no, not for me, but I know other people that did. Okay. Um, at one point, it was also a push and pull between mm -hmm. the person who was employed. Okay to help people with their luggages. luggages and a different person working from a different sector coming to do the to intervene job. that was that person okay. so it becomes a bra between them wow you know at one point i'm like hey here's 100 you guys sit it between you, you exactly. two exactly i would carry this myself so when you give that to them like that was the end of the story well i i I'm like, I don't, you know, I, I left them there okay. querying between okay. themselves, okay. you know. I'm used to that kind of query, I know, you know, <laughs> okay. it's, it's normal for them. So yeah. what of the, sometimes, you know, when you come with the mobile phones, you know, we do have different stories, like I said. 
right. maybe like one phone they might tell you to pay let's say fifty dollars right. or do you have any similar well, story? Well because I travel a lot okay. and I came to Gambia using the airport a lot so I've had a, a lot of experience. I know what I should come with and I know what I shouldn't come with. You know, I know who to deal with mm -hmm. and just get it. Um, it's not an easy way, but sure. a smooth way of just going my way out of the airport. So how would you categorize that engagement? Is it their work? Like are they doing their job or is it just bribery or corruption? How would you categorize well, there it? There are a lot of honest people there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of patriotic people there. Mm -hmm. There's just a few people that make the job there, the environment there, difficult, difficult so, and okay. very uncomfortable for mm -hmm. people. Like I tell you, okay. Gambia Airport is you wanna be you wanna just be in a rush to get out of that place. Sure. So at some point did you attempt any maybe to report any nah. of those cases or maybe to react to it to take care of it mm -hmm. in any way you can? No, no. Um, like I said, I had a smooth transition. Yeah, but like you said, others have been, you know, so facing difficulties. Others did. So I just let them face their problem. I, however they want to handle it, I just let them. So you, do you think it wasn't necessary to? I don't think it was, but you know, the best teacher is through experience. They're yeah, but, but 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 you know, since you said you know you have been traveling in and out, so you right. see this is happening every time. So it is not right. At least you can do something you know, to change. It happens in Senegal and Gambia. I would say, at yeah. least than the airports that I've been to. Yeah. <laughs> in Senegal was terrible too, but mm. not. And I also come to understand they were renovating the airport. Yeah. So where we the exit that we took was different. Was okay. old. They think, I think they said it was the old tarmac or something. Okay. You, you see cords in the. I, I mean, I don't want to talk this much about my country, but. Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know, but it, it it's the reality. It's renovation. It, yeah, it's a reality. So, like, my point here is, um, since you know you used to travel, and I, it seems like it's gonna, it's a tradition already, right. because you don't even know like when you're gonna end up traveling. So, as for now, <laughs> you're just a traveler. Right. So, um, do you have anything like, I mean, do any step, any action that you know you want to take against? Because like you mean suggestion? Uh, exactly. No, not suggestion. Like, what do you want to do personally to see that you know all those you know difficulties are no more there? That you know when you landed, you're gonna have the safe, you know, check in everything. You just get out of the airport. Well, I think um, every airport you go have board members, mm -hmm. and I don't think this. I, I'm sure they know all these these things because they will receive complaints. Then what you uh, well, what would you like to tell the board members? <laughs> like, like if you had to sit face to face with them right now, what would you tell them? Right. Because I know this is a complaint that you know you had. And like a lot of people have. So, what, what kind of complaint will, or what suggestion will you give it to them? I, I don't think I have any suggestion for them. I think if they've not even done this already, is that they need to go out and look at other airports and the way they manage it. And, you know, so they can. It needs improvement. Okay. I would say that for sure. Our airport does need a improvements. Lot of work. It needs improvement. You're right. still watching Government Talents TV and of course this is Semester Avenue Hangout with DJ Zanu. Right. So I am Yusuf of course, you know, so DJ is my uh, guest today. So um, right. let's move from that, you know, right. after, you know, from the airport, you know, how was the reception, you know, among the friends and family, you know. I know <laughs> it has been one of the exciting moments for you. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. Man. Yeah. It's, you know, you can, it's hard to describe that kind of feeling. You know, it's it's been a while not seeing friends and yeah. family, and you're here. You see them in good health, in a in a good mood. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good feeling. So um, when you come, like, what was the first food that you know you demand? <laughs> like, is that? No, for me, I, I miss Benicina, I miss Baganja. No, no, no. But yeah, but I know that must be a particular food that you missed a lot. Well, I have my sister in America. She she does cook a lot of Gambian, Gambian food. food. But I know it it will not be the same as you know the typical Gambian food. No, no, I'm not talking about like uh, <laughs> the cooking aspect. I'm talking, you know, you know, you know, sometimes that that the organic material, you know, so sometimes it's kind of different. 
that the taste is kind of different. You know that. Yeah, I'm sure there's mm -hmm. a lot of frozen food. Yeah. That she has to deep froze. Mm -hmm. I think it would lose the taste and the sure. originality of it. Mm -hmm. But then, it's she's okay. a good cook. Yeah. You barely would notice that, I'll tell you. Then shout out to the big sister. Is it big sister or small sister? <laughs> big sister. Then big sister, shout out to you, you know, for right. that wonderful cook. <laughs> she's a wonderful cook. Okay. I'll tell you that. So, um, where, uh, what, what, uh, what was the first meal you had in the Gambia? Like, is it Benetton? Was it Supakanja? Wow. Uh, you know, for me, mm -hmm. actually, I landed here, it was almost 2 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. I was starving. I think I went to Magic Bar straight. From the airport, I went straight to Magic Bar because I was so okay. really hungry. That's where you ate? Yeah, that's where I ate most of it. What time. did you eat there? What did I eat? Is it? I think it was yasa, fish yasa or something. Mm. Is yasa? Okay, yasa <laughs> fish, right? That's your choice. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Right. You ate with the spoon or with your hand? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wish I was able to eat with my hand, but there were a lot of people there, so you yeah. Know. But I mean, it, it, it's normal. I don't, mind, I don't mind. You can still go ahead and use your hand. Of course. Or maybe like people are gonna say, "Ah, but you some standard akadumuro kabulola." Yeah, they were lucky. They were lucky. I was not. I I was not in my zanu zanu normal self. I know you were exhausted. Yeah, I was exhausted, sure. and I just landed too, and you know. It's been a while since I've been to Magic Bar and okay. the different stuff now. Okay. And I just don't want to freak them out. Okay. Let's just put it that way. I just don't want to like them to like, woo, what's this? Okay. You know, but but it was I ate it was with nice. a fork. Okay. And with a spoon actually. With a I spoon, not your hand. Spark. I'm like now. I'm munuma like with it. That kind of. I know. A knife and a fork. I know. Thing. Spoon will do good. A spoon, I can eat with it. Okay. So um, I understand. You know, we were going around visiting your know, friends and families. You right. know, as a nun, as a kid of family. So course. how of was course. that moment for you? Always humble. I'll tell you that. It's mm -hmm. always humble and mm -hmm. it's always cool. Okay. You know, can be a man. Like I said, we have life here. Mm -hmm. There's life here. Okay. You know. People are welcoming, mm -hmm. people are happy. I don't know where they get that happiness from, mm -hmm. but when you come, you're inspired mm -hmm. to kind of mingle and, sure. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a great joy sure. to be around happy people. Um, I know like the more coronavirus forces itself into the human society, like it has changed a lot of norms, you know, from the way we socialize, you know, we, inter we, we interact like the social distancing and of course, right. you know, <laughs> so like through that social, uh, through that, you know, culture, like what sort of uh, changes do you notice? Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. My people are living their life, man. Okay. Um, so like, w w uh, w when you come, like, did anyone try to show you, uh, or does it maybe like, uh, you come from, you know, America, you know, it's COVID-19 uh, hotspot, so, did you have, because uh, some of the semesters uh, do say like, ah, but in that entire family, but in Malan, they have corona, or like, they might be right, suspecting, right. like, if I'm carrying this virus right. in me. Well, till now, I haven't gone to a lot of houses. Okay. I want to be that respectful. Okay. Um, I've met people on the street okay. and I told them I'll come visit them. But um, I just don't want to be the one that will be accused of spreading. I know. So like, um, d d did you have any call where you said, okay, like I'm coming to visit you in this particular day? Maybe they pass me like, no, 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 I will come no, over. No, or like no, we no, can no, meet. That, that's yet to happen. You know, Zanu is Zanu. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> 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 if you don't invite me, someone else is going to invite okay. me. You know? And I tell you, it's been a while even since I ate up my dad's house. Okay. People invite me. When I wake up in the morning before I go, I go to my palm wine supplier. Mm -hmm. You know palm wine? Yeah, I know palm wine. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to my palm wine supplier and he supplies me with a little, little and a half of palm wine. Palm wine. So you, so you, you, of, you drink palm wine? Yeah, instead of buying that Evian water, mm -hmm. Mostly that's what I drink for the whole day. Without water? Without water. Just palm wine? Just palm wine. And coconut water. 
you know. So it's very. It, how would you call palm wine in Mandinka? How do they call it in palm wine? In Mandinka? In Mandinka. I'm not Mandinka now. Yeah, yeah, I know, but... I know in Manjago they call it Port Pu Fachal. What? Port. Port. Pu. Pu. Fachal. Okay, Port Fachal. Right. Okay. That's what they call it in Manjago. In Manjago, okay. But in Mandinka... Mandinka don't drink palm wine, so I don't think they have a name for it. But you don't know if Mandinka don't drink palm wine or not. <laughs> well, do you know how they call it? I'm not sure. Right. I don't, I don't think... Well, mm -hmm. I know in, in, in one of the call it Singa. 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 Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what they call it. They call it's good. I People know. think it's alcohol, but... Yeah. I don't drink alcohol like that. You know? Palm wine is just a natural ingredient. Okay. You know, it's like cocoa water. You know, cocoa water is yeah. not alcohol. But you know, like a lot of people see it as alcohol. That's out of ignorance. Okay. I'll tell you that for sure. It's not alcohol. It's not alcohol. And palm wine helps with your vision. Wow. So it's, it's natural, it's from just a palm kernel tree. Okay. So if you let it sit, if you let it sit for a while, maybe two, three days, oh, okay. then it turns to alcohol. Okay. So maybe probably that, that's what they have been seeing. I don't know. For okay. me, I always get the fresh one. Okay. Oh yeah, just fresh one. Early one. one. I mm -hmm. just stand there and he got it right from the tree wow. and give it to me. Sisasi. Right. And I tell you, I drink it almost every morning. I drink almost every morning. That DJ Zanu, you guys right. still watching the Garment Talent, and of course it's uh, semester when you hang out with uh, DJ Zanu, and we are right here at Brewfoot. You know, you see how amazing and beautiful you know the place is. Of course, with my yeah. own boys. Obviously. So if you wanna see me, this is where you come see me. This is where you're gonna find me. So most of my Gambia stay is here. Mm. Yeah. Wow, bro, this is so cool. Right. We hope we hope we can do a lot before the end of the corona. At least we we'll have something going on. So I come and work with them. I'm also learning and also knowing what goes into my burden instead of someone telling me this is how much we pay and what not, at least you get a first-hand experience of it, you know. And they're cool, they're all young people, oh. you know. End of the day, I make sure I settle them. Okay, so it's like uh, you pay them daily? Well, it's a contract. It, it is a contract that's already been signed. Oh, okay. But, you know, sometimes the other young people, they, they, they like, they have things they need to settle yeah, with. Yeah, sure. That their salary can't settle. Settle, so they're like, God, come, come over. So if you want to see Zanu, this is where Zanu is usually at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this. They're rushing the rushing cracks. I mean, after two more story building, you can have a clear view up there. Yeah. You know? Even all these blocks, I was part of the ones that hit them up. <laughs> Zeno is true. <laughs> <laughs> you have something, I swear. <laughs> ah. Nakala. Because the concept there is not, is the fact that, yo, if you come from America, you're not supposed to... Yeah, yourself. yeah, exactly. That's not true. Just sit down and call an order or command. That's not true. Some people work harder in America. I know it's, un it's understandable. Some people just want to come and relax and be on a vacation. For me, in Gambia, it's never a vacation. Gambia is home when I'm here. Where immediately I land, I already have something that I'm you working on. Right. 
That's why I don't miss Gambia that much. Like other people, like they go for two, three years. No. We want to be here at least every six months. Because mm. this is home. Yeah. We, we all need to be part of the development of this yeah, country. The process. So we just don't want to be visitors. <laughs> you know? It doesn't tell well about us. There are multiple of other people like me who exactly. are doing the same thing that I'm doing. I think you I know? can attest to that. Yeah, our people just don't come here to mess around. I promise you that. I know a whole lot of people who are doing here well, yeah. doing different things in the hospitals, in other public sectors, you know? I mean... This is amazing, seriously. Right. It is. Right. And it's all young people working here too. All the young people. Instead of going and taking, um, some would say you're trying to look for cheap labor, but that's not it. I don't patronize things that that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I'd rather give it to young people. <laughs> I was. It's funny. I was with a, another young guy here, and who told me I'm doing this because I want to go to Bagway. Mm. <laughs> it was funny, but then it was sad. Yeah, I know. You know, and we were doing this together. Like, no, uh, you know, I'm doing this because I want to go to Bakwe. I don't know if he was serious, too. He could be serious. Or if he was joking. Then I have a lecture time with him. I'm like, hey, nimbula fang, nanang ngasi. We had a good conversation. I don't know how much of that he received. But we have a good conversation. Like, well, you don't need that. But if you're doing this, make sure you're doing this for for a better thing than thinking of Bagwe. Even the money I'm paying you might not even take you outside Senegal, but I'd rather if I pay you, I feel like if I've given it to someone and he has something of a dream that he wants to achieve than Bagwe. There's nothing in, in Europe, man. I wish Gambian people can listen to me. It starts over here. Don't go to Europe without a skill. You're gonna sleep outside. There's nothing. I know a whole lot of Gambian brothers in New York, Las Vegas, um, Michigan, who um, you know, who are sleeping outside. Hey, some. Some who share the same room. Someone is gonna come the night and live in the morning so the other one can sleep because they have one bed. I've seen all of that. Seen people who are in the cold freezing themselves because they have nowhere to stay. So all of that is there. Some people are overwhelming themselves with debt, things they cannot pay, and also at the same time trying all they can to support back home. You know, I wish I can advise everyone, come. Invest home. This is home. We can't just let it for the strangers to take over it. our country. This is home. It's sad. Now that Corona is here, is the best time to think about home. Because it's people think it's gonna go. It's not gonna go. It's sad to stay. Right. It is. It's sad to stay. There. Seriously, that's what the United Nations said. It is sad to stay. Fuck New Dalal, correct? Unless a billionaire makes his money, his profit first. Money fuck New Dalal, correct? Right. Stairs. Trust me, young people here are better than This is amazing. Really, really, really young people. Yeah. It's amazing. So it's important that I bring you here? Yeah. Because it's not something that many people say. Sure. They think semester is about chilling. It's not about chilling. Mm -hmm. To me, semester is bringing something that you can give back wow. to your community. You know? That's my concept. Concept, that's yeah. That's things. how you see it. Right. This land was much bigger. Oh, okay. Right, but then... You know, the pushing and pulling. Yeah, I know. You know, oh no, it was supposed to be... This. this was supposed to, 
I'm like, hey, I'm your neighbor, you know. Yeah, but the good thing I'm, is, I'm not gonna argue with you about the land or where it should be a Sudan Bay. You know, you tell me where do you want it to be. Like, no, it should be a that banter. I'm like, there, it's right there, then. No problem. You know. <laughs> so they then we're gonna dock all of these three. I'm like, why? Why would you do that? Why would you? This this three is unless maybe you want to do something. They like wanted want to, to make charcoal out of it. Oh they, yeah, yeah. You know that's what they do. And now. they what they told me is that that's what they do in Gambia. Yeah. If they sell your property, they need to play it out. But still, they're insistent. But it it meet us off my plan. Now they're like, oh, we need to cut down the trees. So yeah. For that to be a negotiation. Right. Money, right. right. swag be A1. Sense be A1. Swag Personality to be A1. Huh? So, my color lady, Jela Mali, why? Mashallah, Lee Nasna. So, I can see you enjoying the Gambia, right? Of course, I'm mm. in Gambia. This yeah, is my dad's house. Different environment. Wow, right. nice family. Of course. This Good is to be where here. I, I grew up in. This is where I was born and grew up mm, in. So. Okay. It always feels good to be here. Yeah. Like I have the kids and mm. all the things they're doing. Nang and def? Yeah, nang you okay? Study la walla? Mashallah, keep it up. <laughs> yeah. So guys, just like I said, this is Semester Avenue and of course it's hang out with, with DJ Zanu. Right. DJ Zanu is one of the finest, if I say finest and baddest DJ in the Gambia. But of course, you know, he's all the way in the United States of America. Even though he will argue with me that no, he's just, you know, USA is for the holiday, but Gambia is the permanent yeah, base. Cool. But you know, we'll always say, you know, welcome to the Gambia. Okay. It is Semester Avenue with Gambian Talents uh, promotion, you know. It's all about, you know, celebrating you guys. We know you guys leave the Gambia, you know, to go to diaspora, you know, you're right. doing, you know, hustling, dizzling day and night just to make ends meet back in the country. Right. So I think, you know, shout out to you guys for doing that. Well, thank you very much. You guys are doing a good job. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, every immigrant has something to contribute back to their country. Sure. So it's good that you guys are acknowledging <laughs> what yeah, of we course. do. You know, uh, we, we contribute a lot yeah. in this country. Whether notice or not notice, we do. Yeah, right. that's too much. Right. Thank you very much. So like I said, we're going to go out and just hang out a little bit. Then after, we're going to bring the interview for you guys. So just stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Okay. It's Government Talents Promotion. It's Semester Avenue. It's DJ Zanu. So let's go. This is poultry, right? I don't even know yeah. what this is. Poultry chickens. The funny thing is, uh, when I first came, <laughs> these chicks were like this. <laughs> you know, they were chicks. But they grew very fast. In less than a month, I saw them like, man, like, like, <laughs> I know. Yeah. So this is Sanchaba. Mm. I don't think I've been to here before, you know. You know, all of these are my family. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. You know? This seems to be like a jackpot. Mm. Right. Ah, this is Gambia, you see? In the evening, yeah, people are always together, you know, sitting at the shop corner, you know, either right. brewing a tire, chatting. You know, you have a taxi driver, almost the car is almost gonna hit you. I know. After or likewise in the US, where everyone is just at your own business, you know. I'm not sure you guys even have time for this, to come and sit, you know, at the... Well, I do sit outside, I told you, I'm yeah, not your regular... Yeah, but, but it's, it's not common, it's not common, right? Right. Yeah. I never been to Sanjawa before. Right, this is where we fight. Like get the stuff. And the support small businesses. Yeah. Boy, Maki. Hi, boy. Assalamu alaikum. Otherwise, you don't come? I got a few too, huh? Cafe too, huh? Cafe too, Okay, be cafe regla. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. 
Ja, det är Ya. Oke, ya mungkin. Ah, man, I don't get that. Seriously. Lama. Lama nakala. Ana pare wut. lama. Ligi bira fetna. Nice fresh for ya. Fresh. nana. Still watching the main talents and of course it is uh, Samista Avenue hang out with DJ Zanu. Like you've seen the first part we were at the beach all the way in Brufoot at Ghana town. But right now we are at his home that is Brufoot. So uh, we just go straight to our interview DJ. Right. Welcome back to the second phase. Of course. Yeah, I can see you already fresh enough, you know. Yes. Swag A1, everything is A1, you know. <laughs> back to the semester mode. Yeah, exactly. Very good. That's uh, the, uh, that's the real semester now, you know. So um, just you know, when you come, we have seen the video that is trending on uh, social media, especially on Facebook. Right. That is your encounter with the Senegalese authorities, you know. Right. So um, we wanted to know, you know, what is the latest from that? Because you said that your documents were seized, your papers. So I don't know. The latest what is it now? The, story or the latest, the latest from that story, you know. Well, the latest is that um, after I did that video, um, multiple people call me, Senegalese actually, okay. um, who were very concerned, who were not in agreement with what happened, okay. and who. I in contact with the police at Yamatama okay. to make sure that I get my document. At this point, um, it's because I did not have internet service, and I believe oh, okay. just right from that call that I got, it was someone trying to reach me regarding to update the documents. Right. So I'm not at this point. They took it from the police. Oh, okay, it's with someone. Yeah, they took the documents from the police. Okay. At least the last person I talked to mm -hmm. told me they took it now. They have an individual have the document. Mm -hmm. So now it's an arrangement of someone coming from Ziganza to, to Gambia okay. to give me the document. Okay. So hopefully I told about this. So, uh, what, what, to be precise, what kind of document is it? Is it? <coughs> well, it was just a driver's license. Oh, okay. And also, um, my because I didn't want to present them my driver's license of course. Mm -hmm. So they have um, my U.S. Um, it's like a kind of they call it work permit in the. Oh, okay. Right. Most of which I do not need. But um, I also needed to make sure that I put this on the spotlight. Okay. Because I, th I think that I got a fair, unfair treatment. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, and also my insurance. Okay. Right. So um, according to you know you're coming back and forth you know from different police station you know in Zikanshir you know to Yamatoin coming you know going there you know paying here you're supposed to pay there. So do you feel at some point you know it was just like disturbing you or that was the exact procedure to go through? I feel like at that point all I wanted to do was to follow what the law says. Yeah. Um, because 
at one point someone that I was with was like, ah, Joko, Joko Dara, you know? Dara, exactly. But then I didn't want to be in a point where I would feel entrapped. Okay. Because bribery is a crime. And I could have easily just say, hey, mm -hmm. tell me, mother, so mother. But I wouldn't know what the next deal would be. Mm -hmm. And I know how people hustle others like me, especially mm -hmm. if you have a document that is from the United States, so they feel like I'm a mm -hmm. You have everything. So, Buguma gene anything lunga hamnene would mm -hmm. would be regarded as a crime. So that's why I'm going to follow law. So, Lugano na meti moe kudambe na danga topa luluawa. They should have made it easy to get access to justice. Ahamda. Mo wana madam alfe yama toin. Madam Fubu. Then I come to realize that the all is a gang. The police is a gang of its own. They are in agreement in whatever they do. They do. Right. So, so if I can, I'm not an issue with you as a police. So it's like... Already the gang <laughs> knows how to deal with mm. me. Whereas you're not going to be in trouble. You know? All the way to the level of guys and how my commissary. Commissary. Mm -hmm. This is real. I know this because I have many encounters with the police. And I would say even though we feel like these are the guidance of our laws their corruption is a threat to us citizens so that's why for me i i don't i don't know i don't want to say this on, on live tv but i do know at the police especially the one in senegal the how i seen them one thing is a kabudu of gangs full of criminals who would back each other who would support each other, who would conceal and protect each other, no matter how big of a crime it is. Why do you think they're doing this? Is it for money? Is it for just because maybe you foreigner they're disturbing you? Or why do you think they're doing this? Or what is even the need to, you know, to organize a themselves, you know, as a, a that organized... Everywhere you go in the world, everywhere you go in the world, the police, they are a gang. Anywhere you go in the world. It doesn't matter in the United States, it doesn't matter in Africa, they protect each other. That's why you need to be careful how you deal with the police. I'm saying this on mm -hmm. the television. I mean, you need to be careful how you deal with any other thing, but especially the police. The police. They can put you in a lot of trouble. Okay. So, um, you went to Senegalese embassy. Yes. So, you said, according to you, like, they... They also refer you back to them. Maybe like they couldn't do much about it. Well, we we believe. Do you feel that like they ignored you? Maybe like they could have done something. Like they could have taken step since like this is very sensitive. Like you know, Senegal, you Gambian, and we aware of the diplomatic relation. So could oh. they have done something like a little bit effort? <clears throat> well. If, you, if I was the son of a somebody, they would have done something. But I'm a regular son of a painter man. I'm not the son of Baro. I'm not the son of any minister. Mm -hmm. My dad, none of my family is influential in the government. So they, they could care less. Mm -hmm. So that's what I feel. I, I okay. don't think it's because I'm from Gambian or anything. They just could care less. Okay. And that's disappointing. Because all I wanted to do was, you know, I'm, I'm saying this because it, it, it really touched me. Mm. I was really disappointed in the way that they treated me. I was disappointed with the embassy. And this kind of is a recipe for crime because the fact that you're doing something feeling that you're doing it in the right way and you're not given the chance to do it in the right way then what would you do you're gonna do it in the wrong way i believe they could have done something but they wouldn't because i'm not from an influential family so they could care less but no see jai fine okay because we you know we don't we don't 
So um, you didn't go to the U.S. Embassy to maybe report the case? I was going to, but, but you didn't. Um, I, I did call actually. But you know, like I said, these are not regular documents that sentence mm -hmm. your, your free movement. Sure. But um, I feel that it needed to be voiced out. Mm -hmm. So people, if not even me, other people who are tra trying to travel through Senegal, to know that there are a lot of corrupt people out there. And they will do anything to extort your mon money from you. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe the Senegalese authorities? I would not generalize them. Mm -hmm. I, would, I will not say in total they're all corrupt. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm sure they are aware they are aware of this. Of it. But there is no way that they would tell me they are not aware of this. I paid almost fifty to seventy thousand CFI just traveling from here to Bissau on baseless claims. Or the one you are with is without um, a mask. Or your car is tented, it needs a permit. Or you need a stamp here. Just bullshit. Bullshit all the way to Guinea Bissau. Bullshit all the way to Gambia. Pure bullshit. It, it's, it's hard. So do you think your human rights have been violated? <laughs> no. I wouldn't say my... Well, my f right for free movement was violated. Violated, that's what I mean. My right to free movement was violated. And... Um, <laughs> You could never Gambia, but I'm going to go Senegal. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like that. And the reason I put this video up it was because multiple of Gambians always complain about us. Okay. Why is it that they're not taking this as something worth giving concentration? I, don't, I, I just don't know. Okay. Because Nijanga complain about this though. A lot of people are complaining yeah, about this. I think it's a general way, comment that everyone is... Right, the way Gambians are treated at the borders of Senegal. Border, yeah, within the immigration, you know. Right. Yeah, I think it's a long-time complaint. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I've had good experiences, but this experience was bad. So I wouldn't generalize as to, to say the whole system was like that. Like that. Um, they are really, really good Senegalese uniform men. Okay. Who wants nothing but safety and free movement of the people of both countries? Okay. Right. So, like, at some point, you've talked about your um, your job as a YouTuber. Like, if they didn't do anything, like, right. you might be willing to go to YouTube and just publish the story. Right. I feel like that was the only option. Option and power that I was left with. So, like, uh, you think if you've done that, it will, then it, it, there will be any impact from it? Like well, there is an impact. Already, I believe the last time I checked, the video had about 560, some 78 views. Shares. Oh, okay, shares. Right. It almost gone about 48k views. Views. Wow, that's viral. So, I feel like it, keep, it it's still trending. Mm-hmm. Um, and even from the day that I posted it, many people, especially in Ziganjo, even a pastor in Ziganjo called me, you know, contacted me through Facebook. And there was a guy that was going to leave here on Saturday to, to go there, actually. Okay. Just volunteered to do that, actually. But, um... Yeah, it did make an impact. It did. Right. Okay. So, um, I think, you know, we had the story about that. So, I want us to move to your life in the U.S. Right. How is life in the U.S. like? <laughs> I mean, what's your job? What do you do there? We know that you're a <coughs> DJ, of course, but... Yeah, life in the U.S. is... is okay. Okay. You know, it could be better, but it's okay. Um... I live with my family. 
Okay. Um, as a young man hustling all the way to having the opportunity to travel, I learn every day. Um, way before the corona happened, I was working as a front desk agent okay. at the hotel. Oh, okay. And then doing Uber driving at night. Then you have um, all of this family issue and things that you need to fix. And mm -hmm. because you come from a very big extended family, the expectation becomes a pressure. Sure. To a point that I have to leave school and concentrate on trying to help uplift other people. Yeah. But this is not unique. I'm sure a whole lot, I know a lot of people too who are going through the same process. School is important. It's been almost seven years now since I left school and I always think I will be back. But the moment you are enslaved with this Benjamin, you know Benjamin? <laughs> no, what's Benjamin, Benjamin tell us? The dollar. <laughs> the moment you are so enslaved to a dollar, the, you, you cannot go back again. You become addicted wow. to it. So life in the U.S. was mostly work, come home, work and come home. Mm -hmm. You know, you barely have free time. Your, your time is all on a schedule base. And time there goes fast. Yeah. Unlike here, it, even though it's the same 24 hours, there it feels like it goes like twice faster than it is over here because there's a whole lot of things you have to do. You have to do. Right. But, um, I, I don't know. Um, U.S. is great. It's great. I see U.S. as this, this country that can create a lot of opportunity for people. Mm -hmm. That if you work hard, you might be able to achieve a lot. Yeah, but I think um, that that point is very important because a lot of people, like the general belief we have is that, you know, once you are in PAM in the United States, right. you, are, you have already succeeded. No, that's not so, true. That, seriously? That's, that's definitely far from being the truth. Let's, let's say like for a regular person, first if you go to the U.S. Mm -hmm. without regular documents, mm -hmm. Let's say like you go for like a student visa kind of. You need a work permit to be able to work. To work, yeah. And that process alone takes forever. So if you if you don't know anyone there to help. It's gonna be tough. Some are lucky that they know some people there and it kinda lightens it up. Yeah. But I'm got also to live with someone. Like for me when I went there it was it was hard. You have to compromise a lot to be able to have a roof over your head. But just that process of just getting the step of getting a work permit to the step of mm -hmm. being accepted in the society, to the step of, you know, finding a job, to the step of working, to the step of transportation. So it's, it's a struggle that not m so often Full that of people struggle. see. But that itself is tough. And then even though you get paid a decent amount, mm -hmm. you also have a lot of bills that you need to, to take settle. Care, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's getting harder and harder. Harder to the point that there's a lot of equipments now that you need to do. Sure. Thorough studying, like regular school, you have to go mm -hmm. regular school to be able to to master it. Mm -hmm. It's just not regular mixing. There's a lot of into a thing that you need to understand before you right. Okay. Above that, you no longer can just post any kind of music because there's all this privacy law. Yeah. You know the copyright laws. So. It makes it hard. In America, you need to get a DJ license. Wow. Also, the tunes that you play, it needs to be bought. The music that you play, you need to buy. Like, every, let's say every, every music that you play, you have to buy it at least, let's say, a, a dollar. You know? And as a DJ, you need what? Almost about 
one gigabyte of yeah, music. music. That's almost, almost let's say, hundred thousands of songs. And you need to buy each and every one of that music. So it becomes really tough for regular Which DJs is, okay. to be able to to promote them. Of this DJ, if you put like a DMG PJ 100, mm -hmm. I don't think most of them can operate it. Most of them, the one I see is like they're using virtual DJ on virtual their laptops, laptops yeah. and all that. I mean, it works, it's playing the sound, okay. but then you can sense the sound quality. You know, it's about sound quality. Mm -hmm. You know, most of them play the BPM to a higher um, pitch. All of that are things that you need to go to school and learn. Mm -hmm. No one can just teach you like this. Wow. Even me, I'm still learning that. Wow. It's not. It's not something. So that's why I'm. Uh, I was telling you, I'm yet to be impressed by any DJ. I, I heard a lot of mixing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, that's a dub mixing. But then you can hear the fade out. The, fade. the thing. It. There's a lot. That when as a DJ you were like, ah. You know, but people, regular people, will feel that. Will feel it. Yeah. So what's your relationship with uh, some of the country's DJ? Like DJ cool. Fireman, Matabaruka, it's you know, been cool. DJ I'm Lavin Chan. I'm more I'm into um, Fireman. Okay. Um, Lassis. Okay. Um, Stoner. So just some, most of, you know, to be able to, to be able to uplift yourself. Mm. You should be able to also uplift other people. You just don't support people through giving them charity. Okay. And business in general, I think there is some form of complex, high complex okay. in this country that I see that you you feel like you need and 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 I might be wrong saying this. Um, for me, the reason why I believe in supporting local businesses is that the money stays here. Sure. It, y yeah. I it's, think that's the beauty it's, of it's it. A, it's an economic drive force, whereas, you know, you spend money on, I spend money on you, you will spend money back to me. Wow. That's how money works. It rotates around, you know. But if the money that you spending, you're skipping that, individual that mm -hmm. you live with and give it to the next person that you don't live with that money is not going to come back it's going to go to someone Somewhere. else you know wow so that delays development wow that creates more destitution mm -hmm. you know that's that's what i feel <laughs> but i go at rios okay because um most of these other clubs that you go to, mm -hmm. it's not healthy. The way it's done, the smoking there, you know, and I see that people see that as the, the new, the new norm, or is it, I don't know if it's some kind of a fashion <laughs> sense with the weight. Mm. The, uh, the shisha. Shisha or something. More health manage. I feel sorry for that. Seriously. Because it's just a destruction for that. I just wish that they don't see that like it's just attractive. There's nothing attractive about it. About Sisha. Nothing attractive about it. If someone is listening to me, there's nothing attractive about it besides yo. Music. Because that's what our job requires. Okay. Right. Uh, that's very true. Like I said, it's almost at the ending part of this interesting uh, interview or hangout with DJ Zano. Right. I know, like I said earlier on, from the beginning of our interview, like if you come to Gamma, I know like everyone is excited, you know, DJ Zano, you know, the family, friends and neighbors, you know, like, uh, and this is Gamba. Like whenever you come, people always say that, some is anata, I'm on anata, dollar, right. dollar. So like here we are, Gamba talents too, you know, we are asking Zano, where is right. our Silafando? Where is our gift? You, you don't give the because gift right on the camera. Yeah, but Everybody it's okay if you feel no problem gift. because you know. Of course. Okay, but so you, right you don't want to give in front of the camera. Uh, no, nobody gives gift where, where there is no suitor. 
Uh, GIF is all about Sutura, right? Yeah, but sometimes uh, you can, you know, do it maybe like uh, to inspire because it's good gesture. So like other people, wow, Zeno has done so I'm going to do, you know, bigger than his. So at least, you know, positively. Right. First of all, Zeno is not a semester. Wow. But... Malang on the... I can't even remember Malang on the... I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But, um, GIF, GIF, they do GIF in private. Wow, in private. Right. No problem in private, then a uh, traditional message it has, you know, like trust me, you know, where he said, um, if you all run away from our country, you know, it's like we mortgage in our country. So right. I think, you know, this is a clear message. And um, like he said, this is a very, you know, catastrophic and, you know, like desperate moment. You know, it is a time whereby, you know, like humanity desperately needs us, you know, to push it, to push us, you know, in more inclusive, more diverse, more empathetic and, you know, sympathetic direction. Right. So I know, you know, uh, I just hope that we all can learn from this inspirational message and powerful, right. you know, um, advice. It, it, just let me say, like, kindly advice coming from uh, DJ Zanu. Right. So we thank each and every one of you. Right. Like and I said, this is... Close, I think this is important because um, I particularly took very great often you know I wouldn't name the medium but there is a way you brand your country mm -hmm. there is some certain statement you say towards your country you know it it takes a lot out of that country mm -hmm. you portray your country giving it a complex of a sex heaven mm -hmm. I think that's very irresponsible to who said uh, we can also come back in some other time, you know, like as you deep more into the project right. so we can just brought it to spotlight. Right. So um, like I said, it's just a collective responsibility. Like right. he can do it alone. I can do it alone. Right. Neither you can do it alone. But, right. you know, um, exactly. We c just have to come together and just, you know, right. like do whatever we have to do to make our country a better place for right. everyone, especially our upcoming generation, because it's very, very important. Right. So. Uh, DJ Zanu, thank you very much for the time and of everything. Course. I know today we have taken your entire day, <laughs> but you know, like we are, we really appreciate it, and I know right. down there a lot of people are gonna appreciate it. No so thank you so much. You know where to work the program is Government Talents TV, of course our YouTube, our Facebook, Instagram, and all our social media side. Right. And yes, thank you very much from Yusfa. Bye bye, yes. Adam Season, my camera lady. Thank you for the great job. All right. Thank you. Semester Avenue, Semester Avenue Show, live on GTTV. Sargal Sud Modu Modi, Akfatu Fatui. Are you coming to the Gambia this holiday season? Moham Gajugi.